Many newlywed couples are primarily focused on selecting furniture for their new home or discussing when to start a family, despite pledging to support each other unconditionally, they hope that life won't present too many challenges that would test their commitment. For Ryan and Jill Finley, a couple from Oklahoma, their marital bonds and personal resilience were unexpectedly put to the test when a rare medical emergency occurred, Ryan found himself navigating unfamiliar territory as he faced the toughest decision of his life when Jill fell into a coma, then, an unthinkable turn of events unfolded, marking a remarkable story that shouldn't be missed, like many couples in Jones, Oklahoma, Ryan and Jill Finley cherished their weekends, often spending them leisurely at home together, Ryan, a plumbing contractor, would relax on the porch with a newspaper while Jill, an insurance underwriter, enjoyed sleeping in. However, one seemingly ordinary Sunday morning in 2007 took an unforeseen, turn that would alter their lives forever, the Finleys had been married for four years at that point, and Ryan, following his usual weekend routine, didn't notice anything amiss as Jill remained asleep, however, a sudden urge prompted him to check on her, leading him to find her unresponsive despite his efforts to wake her, frantically trying various methods to rouse her. Ryan grew increasingly alarmed when Jill didn't respond and noticed she wasn't breathing, remaining composed under pressure. He promptly called 911, Enduring an agonizing wait for the ambulance to arrive, Ryan lifted Jill from the bed and gently placed her on the floor, where he immediately began performing CPR, fearing for her life, recalling a CPR course he had taken a decade earlier but never had to use until now, Ryan did everything in his power to resuscitate Jill until the paramedics arrived. He remembers the agonizing wait for what felt like hours until the ambulance finally arrived, which, in reality, took about 15 minutes. Distraught, Ryan watched as the EMTs took over, swiftly bringing in a defibrillator to administer electric shocks to Jill's heart in an attempt to revive her, I could hear the machine, Ryan recounted, a thump and then the second bump, I heard Jill coming back down and hitting the wood floor, recognizing that Jill needed immediate critical care, the paramedics rushed her to Oklahoma Heart Hospital in the ambulance, somehow managing to follow behind in his car, Ryan arrived at the ER where medical staff immediately placed Jill on a respirator. Despite their efforts, Jill remained unresponsive, prompting doctors to take further measures to save her life as she teetered on the brink. It took approximately 20 to 25 minutes for the medical team to stabilize Jill enough to proceed with additional treatment, during which time Ryan remained in a state of shock, uncertain of what had caused Jill's condition. With each passing minute, the hospital staff worked tirelessly to provide the best possible care. Thanks to Ryan's swift action, Jill began breathing again, and her heart resumed beating. However, the ordeal was far from over, as Ryan would soon confront a situation for which no one could adequately prepare. Upon examination at the hospital, it was determined that Jill had experienced cardiac arrest in her sleep, resulting in nearly five minutes of oxygen deprivation. In response, Doctors quickly placed her in a chill unit to induce clinical hypothermia, aiming to mitigate the risk of brain damage. Her body was enveloped in large cooling pads and treated with circulating cool water for a period of 24 hours, gradually lowering her body temperature to 90 degrees. Dr. Michael Scheffler, who attended to Jill, explained that there are studies indicating this method helps protect the brain, offering hope for her recovery. Throughout this time, Ryan anxiously waited. A day later, doctors began the process of warming Jill up, with hopes that she might awaken, as some patients do during this phase. However, Jill remained unresponsive, subsequent tests revealed minimal brain activity, yet Ryan refused to relinquish hope at this juncture, Jill had slipped into a coma, intensifying the gravity of the situation, nevertheless, Ryan, steadfast in his optimism, remained faithfully by her bedside refusing to leave regardless of others' counsel, he tirelessly stayed with his comatose wife, even sleeping at the hospital in case she regained consciousness, reading passages from the Bible to her and often lying beside her, Ryan sought solace in his unwavering dedication, praying fervently for her recovery, as days passed, doctors cautiously refrained from declaring the situation hopeless, providing only grim estimates to Ryan, everything they told me was grim, Ryan recalled doctors were telling him that in such cases, there was only about a 1% chance of total recovery despite the daunting odds. Ryan steadfastly refused to accept this as the end, wrestling with conflicting emotions. 
He poured his heart into prayers and began keeping a diary to anchor himself during this tumultuous ordeal, his journal entries revealed the anguish within him but also underscored his unwavering resolve to fight for his wife's life every morning I'd wake up and I'd realize this isn't a dream, Ryan wrote, reflecting on the harrowing experience, despite the doctor's bleak assessments, he clung to a glimmer of hope, acknowledging the slim chance of Jill's recovery, yet refusing to concede defeat. Despite the grim prospect that Jill might remain in a vegetative state or never fully recover, Ryan was still unprepared for what unfolded next, despite the efforts of Jill's friends and loved ones to maintain hope, 14 agonizing days had passed, and she remained in a coma with no signs of improvement, this stagnant condition compounded the already unbearable situation, leading Ryan and Jill's parents to confront the difficult decision before them at just 31 years old, Ryan faced one of the most challenging dilemmas of his life, whether to withdraw life support from the woman he loved. While the thought of life without Jill seemed inconceivable, Ryan also recognized that she wouldn't wish to be confined to a hospital bed indefinitely, today could be the worst day of my life, Ryan lamented in his diary, I essentially have to decide whether or not Jill will live or not, my soul mate, my everything, although Ryan and Jill hadn't prepared advanced healthcare directives or do not resuscitate orders beforehand. Ryan recalled Jill's stance after witnessing his aunt's ordeal on life. Support, remembering Jill's words, would never want to live that way, Ryan understood her wishes, as the pressure mounted, Ryan consulted with Jill's family and ultimately concluded that she wouldn't want to endure a life bound to a bed, with a heavy heart, Ryan made the agonizing decision to remove Jill from life support, a decision he described as the hardest of his life, assisted by Jill's family. Ryan sought a court order necessary to disconnect the feeding tubes, reflecting on the surreal nature of making such a decision at just 31 years old, Ryan expressed disbelief at the circumstances following the decision, doctors explained to Ryan what would occur after Jill's life support was withdrawn, they cautioned that the process wouldn't be immediate, often involving reflexive movements or sounds in what's known as the last rally, despite the immense pain. Ryan and Jill's family reluctantly bid their farewells, knowing nothing could prepare them for the impending tragedy the doctors. Then disconnected Jill from life support, Ryan prepared himself for the worst as his wife hovered on the edge of passing, completely unprepared for what would transpire next on June 9, 2007, Jill Finley was taken off life support, her upper body would shift slightly, followed by incomprehensible mumbling, as Ryan vividly remembered, overwhelmed. Ryan left the room when the mumbling began. Feeling physically ill, despite the doctor's advice to temper his expectations, Ryan couldn't anticipate the emotional toll of witnessing what seemed like the beginning of the end. Hours passed heavily, and Ryan, filled with sorrow, didn't know what to expect when nurses urgently called him to Jill's room around 11 p.m., five hours post-life support removal, returning to Jill's side. Ryan witnessed her mumbling in what he thought was her final rally reflecting on that pivotal day, Ryan recalled believing it was the end, however, as Jill spoke more coherently, expressing her desire to leave the hospital and go to her favorite Mexican restaurants, Ryan realized something extraordinary was happening, despite trying to manage his expectations, Ryan asked Jill questions, astonished when she correctly answered, demonstrating awareness, recording the miraculous moments on his phone, Ryan transitioned from preparing for the worst to witnessing Jill breathing and emerging from her coma, mere hours after life support removal, for Ryan, the experience was euphoric, unimaginably better than he could have anticipated, he expressed disbelief, recounting how he had mentally prepared for the worst, only to witness the best unfold over the following 24 hours, it felt like living in a dream for a day, and then the realization hit me, she's back, dummy, Ryan Finley astonished both medical professionals and loved ones when, after just six days, Jill made a miraculous recovery and was mostly back to normal. All the doctors say I'm not textbook material, she later explained. As is typical for people who awaken from comas, Jill didn't recall the ordeal I do remember the big shower they wheeled me into every day, other than that, I don't remember anything, despite her lack of memory. Jill's thoughts on Ryan's decision to remove life support are touching, well, some people might have been disheartened to find out that their spouse agreed to take them off life support, 
she said, but after learning what had transpired during the two weeks she was in a coma, Jill concluded that Ryan had made the right decision. Jill expressed gratitude for Ryan's choice, acknowledging that she wouldn't have wanted to live in a vegetative state. It was discovered that Jill had a congenital condition causing her heart to stop during sleep, leading to her coma while doctors couldn't pinpoint the exact reason for her remarkable recovery. Jill credits her husband and God for saving her life. I honestly do believe that God answered the prayers, she said. They weren't alone in their prayers, as Jill recounted. We had so many people praying for me. Just tons of different churches and family and friends following her awakening from the coma. Jill faced months of rehabilitation, relearning basic tasks like brushing her teeth, tying her shoes, and cooking, she also underwent surgery to implant a pacemaker for her heart condition and received therapy from occupational and speech therapists. Despite the challenges, the Finleys emerged from the ordeal with a renewed perspective, cherishing every moment together, not wanting to take any moment for granted. The couple is now always at each other's sides, emphasizing the strength and bond. Resulting from their eye-opening experience, they now have a revived appreciation for life and their bond, viewing each day through a different lens, it's brought life to a whole new perspective, she said, we just spend every minute that we can together, going to the grocery store now, we go together, we go everywhere together. Despite facing challenges such as working on her speech and coping with short-term memory loss in the aftermath of her miraculous recovery, Jill minimizes their impact. Stating, pretty much, I'm normal, the couple finds humor in some of the effects of the traumatic incident, one of our friends said, I'm so jealous, you two are like newlyweds, Jill shared, chuckling, reflecting on the emotional journey, Ryan expressed that he would make the same choices if faced with a similar situation again, I think that's only human nature, he said, but honestly, I wouldn't change anything. In recognition of his heroic actions, Ryan Finley was later nominated for an Oklahoma. Heart Hero Award by the Oklahoma Heart Hospital, which acknowledges local citizens who use CPR or an AED to save lives despite their ordeal, Ryan continues to prioritize Jill's well-being, they made sure to visit the restaurants Jill mentioned when she first started waking up from the coma, additionally, Ryan has a charmingly humorous tactic to ensure Jill's well-being, there's still not a night that goes by that I don't wake up, he said, I usually kick her, and if she kicks me back, I know we're okay, that's all about the first story and now. Let's watch another similar story, the daughter, refusing to interact physically with her father, prompted her mother to install a hidden camera, anxious, the mother sat in the bathroom with her phone, summoning the courage to play the footage, over the past month, her daughter had avoided contact with her dad, initially dismissing it as sassiness, the mother now found herself at a breaking point, the footage revealed the heartbreaking truth, propelling her out of the bathroom, she couldn't fathom how this had occurred right under her nose, others would blame her for allowing it to escalate, despite warnings against returning to him even her own mother had advised against marrying him, citing his past actions, but love had blinded her, the forbidden allure had ensnared her, leading to her downfall, for Jessica Noel, life wasn't supposed to be this dire, she had hoped for some respite, having endured enough suffering, both self-inflicted and at the whims of fate and destiny, Jessica reflected on her decision to marry the man of her dreams, a gamble she believed was right, however, that night, as she hurried into her daughter Kenzie's room, she felt the weight of a terrible mistake settling over her, the dimly lit hallway heightened her anxiety, her heart racing as she had just put her five-year-old daughter to bed, when Clint, her husband, entered the room to bid Kenzie goodnight. Jessica felt a prickling sense of unease, knowing her plan was in motion, hastily retreating to the bathroom with her phone. Jessica accessed the hidden nanny cam she had discreetly placed in Kenzie's room as the small screen flickered to life, revealing a disturbing sight, Jessica burst out of the bathroom, propelled by the urgent need to reach her daughter, every step felt like wading through water as she raced towards Kenzie, her reassurances echoing in the hallway, but how could this happen? Hadn't Jessica suffered enough with Clint? Jessica's journey had been plagued by a long and toxic relationship marked by heartbreak and painful separations. Clint, a recurring presence since high school, would enter her life professing love only to vanish without warning. Each departure left Jessica shattered, yet she found herself inexorably drawn back to him, unable to resist the magnetic pull, despite warnings from friends and family, who recognized the cycle of heartbreak Clint brought. 
Jessica had persisted in her attachment. They had always been the ones to piece together the fragments after each emotional onslaught from Clint, despite the warnings, Jessica hesitated to sever ties, Clint was her first love, and his persistent charm wove illusions of a stable, loving future, however, in an unexpected twist, Jessica summoned newfound strength and chose to break the cycle, fueled by determination to liberate herself from the emotional turmoil though fear of Clint's vengeful tendencies lingered. She prioritized self-preservation over the allure of their toxic past, as she reconstructed her life. Without him, hope blossomed, and Jessica found solace in her independence but she should have anticipated Clint's return, true to form, he came back, desperate to reignite their romance, despite echoing warnings, Jessica wavered, swayed by the pull of her first love and Clint's promises of change, recent motherhood also played a role, as she needed support with their baby, tempted by the prospect of a stable family, Jessica succumbed once again, marrying Clint and embracing her role as a mother. Initially, life seemed idyllic. With Kenzie's presence bringing joy and eclipsing Jessica's previous doubts, even her friends and family cautiously embraced this newfound harmony, hopeful that it signaled genuine change. For four years, Clint treated both mother and daughter as the center of his world, erasing the lines of step parentage and embracing them fully, yet, cracks began to surface, subtle but undeniable. Jessica noticed Kenzie's reluctance to embrace her father's touch, and one day at dinner, her daughter mirrored. Her own sassiness initially dismissing it as Kenzie taking after her, Jessica couldn't ignore the growing sense of unease, the perfect family portrait started to fade, revealing the underlying tensions that had lain dormant for too long, despite her conviction that everything was finally right, Jessica realized too late that it wasn't, however, Jessica initially paid little attention to the occurrence. Even after encountering it multiple times, she didn't register any significance, not until it's frequency increased did she begin to suspect that something was amiss, as a concerned mother, she resolved to investigate further, unaware of what she would uncover, for a long time, Clint had harbored feelings of vengeance, he was unwilling to let go of perceived wrongs, resorting to actions ranging from arson to vandalism, his return into Jessica's life, particularly upon discovering her pregnancy, had been fraught with hurt and a sense of betrayal, despite the recent tranquility in their lives. Jessica had momentarily forgotten Clint's vengeful nature, however, upon noticing her daughter Kenzie's unusual behavior, Jessica's mind wandered back to Clint's troubled past, she remembered his capacity for malevolence when feeling wronged, yet hesitated to immediately conclude that he was at fault for Kenzie's demeanor, instead, she considered the possibility that the issue lay with her daughter. Jessica embarked on a period of close observation of Clint and Kenzie, noting their secret of interactions and unsettling looks exchanged when she was absent. With each passing moment, her concern intensified, prompting her to reinstall her distrust of Clint, she began scrutinizing his actions, particularly his interactions with Kenzie, and ultimately decided to install a nanny cam in Kenzie's bedroom, driven by a mixture of fear, helplessness, and a growing sense of isolation, Jessica concealed the nanny cam behind some of her daughter's toys. Ensuring it was well hidden, she connected the feed to her phone, ready to monitor the situation, her plan. Seemed straightforward in theory, but its execution remained uncertain, Jessica braced herself for what the nanny cam might reveal, hoping fervently that her fears were unfounded, she couldn't bear the thought of putting her daughter in harm's way due to her affection for Clint, as Clint joined her in bed after saying goodnight to Kenzie, Jessica felt a surge of revulsion, she couldn't shake the disturbing thoughts racing through her mind. What had Clint done to make Kenzie so fearful of him? Something had clearly changed between them, and Jessica couldn't ignore it. When Clint leaned in for a goodnight kiss, Jessica couldn't hide her discomfort, she struggled to find the right words, settling for a vague excuse about being tired, doubt clouded her thoughts, leaving her feeling overwhelmed, time crawled by as Jessica yearned to review the footage on her phone, hoping for answers to her daughter's unsettling behavior, strangely. She received no notifications, concern gnawed at her ass. She wondered if the camera malfunctioned or if Clint had discovered it, the possibility that Clint might be hiding something intensified her anxiety, however, when Jessica checked the camera in Kenzie's room, it was functioning perfectly, she couldn't comprehend why it hadn't captured anything, or had it, she was about to find out, as it turned out, nothing significant occurred on the first night, 
Jessica took her daughter to bed and waited anxiously for Clint to enter, rushing to the bathroom. She turned on the camera. Only to see Clint briefly wishing Kenzie goodnight at the door without stepping inside, Jessica couldn't determine if Clint was suspicious or not, but she knew she needed to remain patient, despite the difficulty, considering her daughter's well-being was at stake, she even contemplated asking Kenzie directly about her concerns but feared it might exacerbate the situation, signaling to Clint that their plan had been compromised. All Jessica could do was wait, and it took four days before any. Significant developments unfolded during this time, tensions in the Noel household escalated, Kenzie seemed visibly distressed whenever Clint approached her, even screaming on one occasion, Jessica recognized the signs of a child in fear, a scenario she had seen depicted in numerous television shows, she regretted ignoring the warnings from her friends and family about Clint, blinded by love, the situation reached a tipping point while Jessica was cooking dinner and Kenzie was watching cartoons. As Clint walked in, Jessica's instincts urged her to observe them discreetly, and that's when she heard Clint whisper to Kenzie, you can't tell mommy about this, okay, it's our little secret, Jessica's heart pounded in her chest, tears streaming down her face, while this was compelling evidence, she realized it was just words and could easily be manipulated by Clint, she needed more concrete proof, observing them at the dinner table, Kenzie purposefully sat far away from Clint, who kept trying to serve her food, Further adding to Jessica's suspicions, Kenzie's continued objections made it clear that something was amiss between her and Clint, Jessica fought to control her breathing, but her gut urged her to intervene, is everything alright between you two, Kenzie, are you okay, you seem scared about something, honey, do you want to talk to mommy, Jessica asked, hoping Kenzie would confide in her, to her dismay, Kenzie looked directly at Clint and replied, no, mommy, everything's fine, I'm just not very hungry, can I go to my bedroom now, please, it felt as though Clint had signaled Kenzie to stay silent, Jessica could see the fear in her daughter's eyes when she looked at Clint, as if she knew speaking up would lead to trouble, unbeknownst to Clint, Jessica was covertly gathering evidence against him, determined to bring everything to light, as days passed, Jessica's anxiety peaked, she couldn't bear seeing her daughter living in fear, haunted by Clint's whispered words, although she lacked conclusive, Evidence from the nanny cam, Jessica remained vigilant, hoping to stay ahead of Clint's schemes, however, over the weeks, she noticed a significant shift in the dynamics between Clint and Kenzie, while Kenzie still avoided physical contact with Clint, she became more polite and even allowed him to serve her food at meal times, Jessica remained skeptical, sensing that something was off, then, one night while tidying the living room, she received a notification from the nanny cam, Jessica hadn't. Realized that Clint and Kenzie had slipped off to her bedroom, as she clicked on the notification, she held her breath, uncertain of what she was about to uncover, if it confirmed her suspicions, she had a plan in mind, but she wouldn't confront Clint immediately, she would initially contact the authorities to ensure he couldn't escape, then gather all the necessary evidence to provide to the police. Clint would likely face a lengthy prison sentence, eventually, she reluctantly clicked on a notification, regretting it immediately, it wasn't so much what she saw but what she overheard, Clint was speaking in a hushed tone to Kenzie, urging her not to tell her mother about what she saw, emphasizing they must keep it between themselves to avoid her mother getting upset, Jessica's stomach churned with nausea upon hearing this, wishing she hadn't heard it, yet grateful she had recorded everything, however, it left her with more questions than answers it appeared Kenzie had witnessed. Clint doing something, Though Jessica could only speculate on what it might be, it seemed clear that Kenzie had seen something traumatic, Jessica wondered if it could have been the day Clint picked Kenzie up from school, she became convinced that Clint was cheating on her, and Kenzie had witnessed it, it all made sense why Clint was trying to silence Kenzie, Jessica was at a loss for words. Feeling not only betrayed by Clint's secrecy with their daughter but also by his infidelity, she couldn't comprehend what she had. Done to deserve this situation, she was beyond distraught and didn't know what to do, Clint, the man everyone had warned her against, had once again proven himself to be unworthy of her trust, the only way she could confirm his infidelity was by checking his phone, knowing the password, she resolved to do it while he slept, feeling as though her life had become a nightmare because she had allowed Clint back into their lives. As Clint finally settled into bed, Jessica waited for him to fall asleep. Knowing he usually did so quickly, 
Within minutes, she slipped out of bed, retrieved his phone, and quietly left the room, she made her way to the bathroom and sat down on the toilet seat, feeling the weight of her decisions bearing down on her. She took a deep breath and entered Clint's password, which happened to be her birthday. Jessica felt a tear roll down her cheek as she reminisced about the good times she shared with Clint. Now tarnished by his actions, she had believed he was a good person, but with this damning evidence, he appeared more like a villain, she couldn't fathom that someone she loved could betray her and their daughter like this, as Jessica quickly scrolled through Clint's phone, she found no evidence of cheating, only familiar contacts and messages, even his social media accounts yielded no incriminating clues, she shook her head in confusion, feeling like she must be missing something, she knew Clint could be deceptive, recalling a past incident when she caught him lying. Despite his promises to change, she had trusted him wholeheartedly, hoping he would stay on the right path with her, however, it seemed he had veered off course once again, Jessica realized she couldn't keep up with his deceit and resolved that this would be the end, though uncertain if he was cheating, she devised another plan to catch him in the act, she knew Clint frequented the local bar, where he likely met his secret companion. Jessica arranged for her best friend Mel to babysit Kenzie. While she prepared for a stakeout mission when Mel questioned her motives, Jessica explained that she still loved Clint deeply and needed concrete proof if he was indeed cheating, having been deceived by Clint before, she couldn't afford to take any more chances with their lives however, after spying on Clint for over an hour at the bar, she observed him only socializing with his friends, drinking beers, and playing games. Jessica felt a sense of relief tinged with disappointment, still, the peculiar conversation Clint had with Kenzie lingered in Jessica's mind, and she remained determined to uncover what they were up to when she wasn't around, her concern for Kenzie grew immensely, realizing her daughter's demeanor had changed in the last few days, Jessica blamed herself for not noticing sooner, too preoccupied with catching Clint in the act of cheating, she felt like a terrible mother, failing her precious daughter in multiple ways, however, she resolved to put an end to it once. And for all, it was time for the truth to be revealed. In the present moment, Jessica huddled in the bathroom, reviewing nanny cam footage on her phone, seeking answers. The screen displayed a tense interaction between father and daughter, with Kenzie's eyes reflecting deep discomfort. Determined to confront the issue, Jessica watched in horror as the scene unfolded, her forehead furrowing with concern, her fingers trembling. She couldn't decide whether to throw her phone away or hold on to it. Tightly as she rushed off. All she knew was she had to reach her daughter as quickly as possible. Clint had a troubled past, with stints in jail and prison, but he had claimed to have changed, maintaining one of the cleanest records in recent times. Jessica sprinted down the hall, her breath catching in her throat, bursting into Kenzie's room to find Clint and Kenzie in an unexpected tableau as she watched. The situation unfolded differently from what she expected, Kenzie was attempting handstands, guided by her father's. Patient encouragement, confusion enveloped Jessica as she listened to Kenzie explain the unusual dynamics between her and her dad, it turned out Clint and Kenzie had a bet or unique arrangement, if either touched the other without mastering a handstand first, they would have to endure watching each other's least favorite TV show, Kenzie, eager to embrace her father was determined not to endure reruns of monster truck stunt shows every evening, Jessica's initial panic transformed into relief, then. A pang of guilt for not understanding sooner, Kenzie poured her heart out, expressing the conflict she felt in the situation, feeling torn between embracing her dad and dreading TV torture, Kenzie's innocent revelation softened Jessica's concern, she realized it was a quirky yet harmless family game as this realization settled in, Jessica hugged Kenzie tightly, a mix of relief and lingering unease washing over her. Despite this, she couldn't help but feel a twinge of regret for allowing. Misconceptions to cloud her perception, reflecting on her past with Clint, Jessica acknowledged how their history of mistrust had affected her ability to see the truth of their current relationship, she wondered if her past experiences had conditioned her to expect the worst, even when reality proved otherwise. Sensing Jessica's internal struggle, Clint reassured her of his transformation. He had a heartfelt conversation with her, expressing his commitment to never hurting her or their daughter. Again, while Clint had a past filled with poor choices, Jessica recognized that it had ultimately led him to become a devoted father and husband, however, she grappled with conflicting emotions, 
torn between weariness and the desire to believe in Clint's transformation, Jessica understood that rebuilding trust required a leap of faith, a conscious decision to let go of the darker aspects of their history. In the following weeks, Jessica sought professional help and engaged in deep conversations with Clint, learning about his years of self-reflection. And genuine desire to change, the Noel family embarked on a journey of healing and understanding, the handstand wager became more than just a game, it symbolized their unique bond, fostering laughter and connection, while scars from their past remained, they no longer held the power to inflict pain, as they had transformed into reminders of their resilience and growth. Above is today's story, if you like it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up, see you next time.